Hey guys, Jimmy here from Jay Kaiser Custom MX and want to uh, put together a short video um, on re uh, regarding uh, rebuilding or restoring your dirt bike. Um, it's something I do a lot of in here um, and uh, I, I get a question quite often of, of, you know, how do you get started or what do you do, things like that. So today was a perfect day to uh, put together a short video uh, on my process. But the reason is, is because I have three dirt bikes in here currently that are three different stages of uh, rebuild. So what a great time to, to go through that. So uh, basically, I have a process that I began with and I kind of finish up with. And throughout the build, uh, there's things I do to, to try to minimize my wait time. So um, I'll go through all that and hopefully this will help you uh, get started on your, uh, on your rebuild or your um, restoration. Uh, it can be overwhelming. Uh, it can also be expensive. Um, and a lot of times guys just put the bike on the stand and go, you know what, it's just too much. It's going to be too difficult. I'm just not going to worry about it. But uh, actually, once you get started, once you get to a point and you get started, it's much easier to continue on. And then it's, uh, it's much more rewarding that way. So uh, anyway, let's get started. I'll show you what I do and we'll go from there. All right, so let's get started. So first thing um, we need to do is make a space for our, our restoration or rebuild. Um, inside your garage, your carport, your living room, whatever you've chosen to, uh, to do your restoration, go ahead and, and make that it, clean it up, get your spot ready, and, let, and designate that area. You need to make sure that you're not having to move from one place to the next, parts will get scattered, it's just a mess. You don't wanna do that, you wanna to stick to the same place. So uh, you don't have to have a fancy garage, you don't have to have every tool known to man. You just need a good place for you to work. Um, hopefully a comfortable place for you to work. So um, figure that out and get started, preferably out of the weather. You, you don't wanna be you know, really in, in the weather there. You certainly don't wanna get rained on, but nevertheless, figure that out. And then number two, you're gonna need some uh, places to put parts. So as things come off the bike, you just need to be able to, to place the parts in a bin. Uh, you, you start putting stuff on the floor, it gets kicked around, things get lost, it's a bad idea. So what I like to do is I pick these boxes up uh, from just the local hardware store, and um, I have several of those, and, uh, and I use those during restoration. So I, I clean one out, I have a little place where I can stick a label on the side of it uh, with, with the bike I'm working on. If you need to do that, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, but mainly, you just need a good um, good plastic parts pin. And you're probably going to need a few of them. So at least two, or maybe three, but at least two. Uh, something else I do is I utilize the uh, cardboard boxes that come in with parts. So for small things, I, I keep those handy uh, for parts. So. As you uh, begin taking parts off the bike, you want to be able to put in there and, and keep safe and out of the, the weather and the dust and everything else. So that's uh, step one. Step two, clean the bike. Go ahead and give it a good wash. Uh, make sure that um, you've got most of the dirt, as much of the oil and grime and grease you can off the motor. Uh, just, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be um, just spick and span but you need to clean, clean the last ride's dirt off at least. You don't need dirt falling into the motor and making it even worse uh, on you than what, what it already is. So make sure you have a good clean bike and, um, and you really need a good stand. You don't have to have the fanciest stand there ever was, but you do need a good stand. If you don't have one, or you wanna build one, or quite frankly, you can pick up a pretty cheap one at Harbor Freight or online for less than $30. Or, or any uh, any dirt bike uh, parts warehouse will have those. So you wanna make sure you've got it on the stand and, uh, and ready to go. Um, so those are your first two things you need to do. Clean, organize spot, and of course your parts bin. All right, so uh, let's go a little further and I'll show you what, what I do from that point on. Okay, as stated, I have uh, basically three dirt bikes in three stages here. Um, you'll see the 88 CR125 here on the stand, uh, pretty much a bare frame, just a rolling frame at this point. In the floor, you see I've got uh, what looks to be the beginning and the starting point of a KX. So, uh, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, the suspension is just laying on the floor, just got it back from, 
vapor blasting and the uh, frame has been powder coated. So I've kind of got all that together right there and um, I'm actually going to move some stands around and do some things so I can get it on the stand and get started. So that's kind of a different stage. And then of course I've got the 2000 uh, RM125 here that is uh, further along um, down the road here. I uh, just finished putting the motor together last night. So it's coming along nicely in, in a different stage as these. So, uh, what do I do to get started? Basically, as stated, once you get uh, the bike cleaned off, you want to get it on a stand, get it in your spot, and start, uh, you know, go ahead and start disassembly. The first thing I do, take the plastics, uh, fenders, uh, fuel tank, seat, all of that comes off so I can get to the bike itself. So all the body parts off, everything, fenders, all, all of it. Um, I drain the fuel tank and then I put it on my, my part shelf and put it aside. Uh, then I'll go ahead and pull off the subframe, the air box, uh, carburetor, and put uh, start putting, well, like the carburetor, I'll go ahead and put in the uh, parts bin, um, air box, I'll set aside to, to clean. And till I've got just what you see here except with a motor, okay? So at this point, I'll go ahead and uh, pull the motor off and sit it on the bench. If you have a, a place to work or even a table, a folding table, it doesn't matter, but you need a place for your motor. All right, and then that's, that's kind of something you want to work on a little later. Uh, at this point, you want to get the bike down to here. All right, this gives you a good, um, this is a great time to inspect it, to inspect the frame, inspect things that you can see. I mean, as you can see, this thing here is still covered in grease and oil and everything else, and I cleaned it, um, but that's just where we're at. So. Uh, you want to get to this point and then at, as you go you want to um, you know put your motor on the bench uh, although this one's a little further along um, and you've got parts you know that you put in your bin and then the parts that uh, go up here I will usually you can see the cylinder in there I'll usually pull the cylinder off of the motor before I pull the motor out so if that's uh, a little easier for you then then I would suggest doing that and then, of course, the radiators come off, and that's that. All right, so that's where we're at at this point. Um, you want to, uh, like I said, you want to make sure you get your parts in a box. Uh, whatever you pull off, it doesn't matter. And I also like to use, uh, for, for bolts, I would like to, uh, I like to grab some uh, Ziploc bags, and I put bolts on there, and I just label the bag as it's, you know, stator cover bolts, um, clutch cover bolts, and whatever it is. I like to, to label those. And then I just put the bag of bolts in, in the box, you know? So once I get to this point, um, I wanna go ahead and go a little further. So after this, um, I'd like to go ahead and pull the rear shock off. Um, the, of course, the, the, the wheels, the rear shock, uh, swing arm, handlebars, uh, forks, electrics, and uh, of course the carburetor is still dangling on this one, and just take the rest of it off. This, if, once you get to this point, you're you're pretty much home free. You don't have a whole lot to go. The only thing that really holds people up is that bolt right there. That sucker could be froze in uh, uh, tighter than Fort Knox. So hopefully yours isn't, but if it is, you just have to be um, persistent with heat and, uh, and, and hopefully you'll get it out. There's a lot of uh, videos and online tutorials on how to get those things out, but they can be froze. This one was really tight, but I got it to move, so uh, I've put it back in just, just to hold the swing arm on for a bit. And then, once you get down to nothing but frame, um, wheels uh, uh, and, and forks, shock, all that, you can um, pretty much go ahead and reorganize at that point, okay? All right, so we're down to, um, we've got the bike on a stand. We've got uh, pretty much everything off of it. We've taken it apart. Uh, we've put boxes of parts aside. We've got parts and boxes that's kind of scattered out, labeled bolts, did all this stuff to try to keep, um, uh, you know, as organized as you can. At this point, you're gonna think, oh my God, I hope I remember where all this stuff goes. That's pretty much what's happening right now. And, uh, you know, that I do it every single time. Um, even if it's a bike I've worked on before and I know very well, I'll still say, 
I hope I, I remember all this stuff, guys. So um, you just put it in the box and be done with it. Just just move along. All right. Um, what I like to do uh, right now is plan. So you can prolong this process uh, uh, quite a bit if you don't plan right here. Um, you need, uh, now that you've gotten to this point, now you need a starting point, a new starting point for the rebuild. You've just undone everything. You've just taken it all apart. Now we've got to start. So um, I, if, if, so in your rebuild, if you are going to repaint the frame, powder coat the frame, do nothing to the frame, clean the frame, um, now's the time to inspect it. Now, I always send my frames over to be powder coated. Uh, it's just what I do. I think it's a durable, uh, great process. It's quick. It's uh, easy. It's, I think it's affordable. Um, and, and, and the guy that I use does just a jam up job. So for me, powder coating is the way to go. A lot of people don't like it. They'd rather paint or what have you. Doesn't matter. At this point, you want to do whatever it is you're going to do to your frame and you want to do that now. So your frame and your subframe are next. Now, on the Kawasaki uh, that you saw, uh, the subframe uh, was no good. So now is your time to start thinking, all right, um, I've got to I've got to see if I can search for a replacement part. I gotta find a part. Oh my god, this is where things uh, start to cost money, right? So I immediately went on eBay and found out that the 89 uh, KX125 subframe, um, the few that were on eBay were very expensive. Well, I gotta have one. So um, I checked out one person's um, uh, pay or their, their eBay store. They had a lot of parts. Uh, they had a, a very nice KX125 subframe. But they also had some other parts that I knew that I would need as I was taking it apart. One thing was the rear brake caliper was shot. Um, I needed a new coil. So it looked like they had parted the bike out. So I contacted the guy and said, hey, can you work me out a deal on the, uh, on the subframe uh, if I can buy the caliper from you and a couple other things. And of course he said yes, and there you have it. So I bought the subframe from him, a few other parts. When those parts came in, they just went right to the box, just as if I had pulled them off. Of the bike to begin with okay and I got rid of the bright I mean the, the the ones that are no good I, I took them out okay so now I've got a, a sub a good subframe and a frame um, I go ahead and take the rear shock spring apart because I want to go ahead and powder coat or paint or whatever my process whatever I'm going to do um, I want to do that right now that's that's I want to make sure I get all that done at one time so I send the frame uh, the subframe and the rear shock spring uh, to be powder coated. Um, I take those over, I get those back, now I have a starting point, okay? Um, the frame goes on the stand and I can begin. Now this is where things can get uh, slow or pick up the pace or wh whatever the case may be. You don't want to have big gaps between working on it and not working on it. That's where you'll lose interest. So you don't want that. So that's why timing is, is everything and planning. So let me take you back over to the bike and uh, show you some, some things I do as far as planning and the bench. So let's, uh, let's go to that step, show what's going on. Okay, moving back over to the KX and you see that I've gotten the, uh, the uh, frame, the subframe and the shock spring back from powder coating. Now, what I also do while that is gone, I pack up all of the parts that are really in desperate need of a good cleaning, and I send these things over to Premier Vapor Blasting. And these are my shock tubes. You can kind of see them in wrap. That's just how he sends them back, um, or the lowers, all cleaned up. I also send the rear shock, and uh, that's some shock parts. And let's go over to the bench here. I sent the swing arm, swing arm looks great, and some other hard parts, um, usually engine brackets, um, the steering stem for sure, because I, and also go ahead and pull the, uh, the um, bearings off the steering stem and I send those, um, the linkage, 
and then the carburetor. I take the carburetor apart and then I send that over to Premier Vapor Blasting also. So before I do that, I go ahead and remove bearings out of, uh, like I said, the, um, the linkage, the stem, and the swing arm. Now, what I want to do is I want to send all of that uh, out to be vapor blasted or cleaned while the frame is getting powder coated. I want to make sure that I'm doing that at the same time. Now for you, if you've decided, you know what, I'm going to paint my frame or I'm just going to clean it or whatever, hey, that's great. If you want to just clean your parts, that's great too. Um, but you want to go, this is a great time to go ahead and really do something, whether it be a really good cleaning, um, whether you want to tackle the paint job yourself or you send it over to somebody. To me, uh, while I've got the bike apart, I don't really feel like it's that great of an expense to go ahead and do this. If you get your frame and, and your, your, your other hard parts uh, painted or powder coated in my case, um, it's, it really motivates you to make this thing look great. Um, I love using the vapor blast process um, that, that, the, um, that Premier Vapor Blasting uh, does for me. Um, and, and I think, quite honestly, the, the fee for that is worth every dime because these parts come back nice and clean um, and ready to go. It really gives you a good starting point. Now, the second thing is um, getting it back together. So let's uh, go back over to uh, uh, the bench here and I'll talk to you about getting things back together and what to work on, what not to work on, uh, where do we go from here? Okay, so now we've got uh, some things moving along, looking great. I've got a powder coated frame. I've got um, some parts clean uh, from, uh, from, from, from vapor blasting. Um, I'm moving right along, things are great. Uh, I haven't spent a whole lot of money yet. Now let's dig into the motor. Um, well, now you're gonna find things wrong. You're gonna find um, things broken. You're gonna find some things, oh my God, I gotta replace this. Now what do I do? So here's where you begin um, making your bike better again. And you don't wanna skip this stuff. You certainly don't wanna halfway fix it now. Now's the time to do it. You've got it apart. You'll kick yourself if you don't go ahead and do it now. So let me give you some examples of what I mean. Uh, on the KX125, um, I found that when I pulled off the clutch cover, um, I found that it was broken up at the top and a few other places. Uh, on the CR125, the same issue, uh, the in, inside of where the uh, water pump housing was corroded, somebody had fixed it with JB Well, did a terrible job, and then also on the bottom it had been broken, someone had JB welded it too. So um, I decided I want to uh, go ahead and replace this part. So I went to eBay again, found uh, one in very good shape, and, um, and I went ahead and purchased it. It goes in the parts box. Now, you don't have to know everything there is to know about every part of a dirt bike. I certainly don't. And that's why I utilize professionals to help me with the build. It should be no shame in that, and by all means, you should take full advantage of that. Um, so what do I mean? All right, I'm not ever, ever going to be uh, a person who knows how to make this cylinder fantastic and ready to go. And I'm certainly not just gonna clean it, stick a piston in it. Um, I'm sure the inside of it is in need of attention. Um, I'm sure the Nicosil plating is probably worn. There's probably places in there that I don't see that a professional would. So um, first thing I'm going to do to this cylinder is carefully, carefully pull out the power valves and put them in a bag labeled and, um, and set those aside. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the studs on out. At that point, this cylinder will go to uh, a reputable shop for replating uh, inspection, service, things such as that. I currently um, use Millennium Technologies. They do a great job for me. The turnaround time is great. Um, but there is a turnaround time. No matter who you send uh, these things to, whether it be a local shop or someone you send it to, there's always a turnaround time. So 
when I set planning, this is it. I've got the bike that I can start putting together. I've got suspension parts kind of laying in the rear. This bad boy needs to go ahead and go. Don't wait. Go ahead and send it now because you're looking at at least two weeks at best, probably three, maybe four, to get it back. Um, what I prefer to do, this is just me, is um, if, the, if the power valves look uh, fairly well, I'll, I'll hang on to them here, I'll clean them off on my own and I'll send the cylinder. If they're pretty cruddy, I send the power valves um, with the cylinder because uh, Millennium Technologies happens to have a power valve cleaning service that I've used. So off all that will go, and, uh, and I'll let them, them do that. And I also will purchase the piston from them as well, because I want them to match the piston, uh, get the ring gap right, and so all of that will come back to me all ready to go. So this, go ahead and choose whoever it is you're gonna use, and go ahead and send it off. But utilize a good professional for something like this, okay? So now I can uh, go ahead and tackle the bottom end. So, uh, so now I've got, let's say I've got the bike on the stand. I've got, um, oh, I've got bearings. I've got the parts clean. I've, ordered, I've placed my first order uh, for OEM parts or uh, whatever parts you choose for bearings. I try to get every OEM part available. If, there, if there's one, I don't care that it's a little bit more expensive. I just know it's a good part. I know it fits. It's the right one. That's what I like to do. Um, for steering stem, um, I, I try to go ahead and replace those with OEM. If not, I find a reputable uh, bearing company. Um, I tend to uh, lean towards Pro-X for a lot of bearings and rods and things such as that. I think they have good product. So um, I try to find the OEM or maybe a Pro-X product for, for the uh, stem. So I wanna go ahead and get the uh, bearings back on the stem and, uh, and put back in the bike. Now, Steering stem bearings, those are not easy to come off. Um, don't ruin your stem trying to pull it off. If you can't get it off, just utilize a machine shop that can get that pulled off for you, something. Um, and then press back on if you need to. But um, I've, I've found that using a machine shop, if I need it, is worth the time and money than it is the aggravation and possibly tearing up a part. Don't tear it up because you're getting mad at it and you're jamming a screwdriver and hammering and you got the chisel out and the Dremel out and all that. Don't do it. Just, just let someone else handle it and, uh, and they'll do it the right way. Now for me, I bought the Motion Pro uh, steering stem tool so that I could pull those off easily, put them back on easily. I'm doing a lot of it. It's, that tool is worth it for me. Um, but otherwise, use a, use a shop for that. So you want to get your bearings pressed back on, at least on the bottom. The top one's not pressed on. Um, and then get your stem back in the frame. That's the very first thing I do. I got a, uh, I got a good, clean, powder-coated frame. I got a good, clean steering stem. Those two going together. Very first thing I do. I've done it that way always on every bike behind me. The same thing. All right? If I'm satisfied with the forks, then the forks can go on back. Um, after I've cleaned them. I want to make sure I've cleaned them and, and that they look they look nice. Now, for the bikes that I purchase, um, I purchased them unknown. I don't know when the suspension parts have been serviced last, probably never. Um, there's no there's no real history on the ones that I, I buy. So I personally send all my suspension parts um, to Factory Connection and I let them take care of rebuilding the forks and rebuilding the shocks so I know I have nice fresh suspension. Um, I know this is starting to add up. Uh, this is, you know, there's money here, I'm buying this, I'm going to eBay, I'm buying parts, I'm sending things to be clean, but that's just part of it. And even if you have to do a little at a time, I don't recommend doing a lot at a time. Even if you do a little bit at a time, it's a little much easier to do that way. But I send my parts. Now, if your suspension is good, you're happy with it, uh, then great. Let's go ahead and bolt the forks back on and, um, and then we'll move on to the rear shock. So let's move over to the Suzuki now and, um, and I'll show you where I'm at with it and kind of the progression that I would made um, with, with the bike up to this point. All right, so actually this is not the Suzuki. This is the parts bin for the Honda CR125. Um, you can see transmission parts in there, some bearings, a case half, 
uh, the clutch, clutch springs, just a bunch of stuff. This is all internal engine parts uh, for the bottom end. You can even see that I have labeled a few things. I like to use labels and bags because there's no way in the world you'll remember every bit of that. There's just not. So um, this is the point where you need to decide what you want to do on your bottom end. Is your bottom fine? Great. If it's not, uh, it's time to, to split the case and get in there and, and fix it. If I were you, I'll, if you don't have uh, a known last time that the bottom end was rebuilt, you again, you'll kick yourself if you don't do it now. So um, I will go ahead and split the cases. Let me move some parts out of the way and go ahead and get into this bottom end. So um, in this case on the CR, I have already removed the bearings. As you can see, um, that is a chore sometimes. And remove all the internal bearings on this half. And there you have it. So I've split the case. I've got all the parts down here. I want to make sure that I've got new OEM bearings in all of the places that I can. It's important to me to use OEM bearings because I believe that they will, I don't want to be back into this engine a month from now or two months from now, not even six months from now. Um, so I like to go ahead and do that. Again, if this is not something you're familiar with or even want to tackle, um, don't worry about it. Let's take it to a local bike shop or send your um, motor off to a reputable engine builder. There's a bunch of them out there. There are lots, to, to, many of them to find online. I use them all the time for different stages of uh, rebuild. But uh, now's the time to do it. Um, I also, here is a crank to a KX125. It's not the one that um, is going in my bike. But at this point, I like to take the crank and decide, do I need to rebuild it or not? Chances are it's a yes. If I don't know, then it is. I like to use Pro-X for the uh, um, rod kit uh, for my rebuilds. And then I send those right over to Ken O'Connor and let him balance and fix it. So now we're here. We have split the case. Uh, we've put new bearings in. And I do this a little at a time. So basically, I've done this over a period of time. Now, I did a little extra on this particular engine, and the bottom half of the cases have been Cerakoted, and then, of course, this uh, cylinder vapor blasted um, and then put back together. I like to buy new bolts. I do not like to use the same old crusty ones that were in it. So a nice new bolt kit is always a very inexpensive, but very nice thing to do uh, for your rebuild. So there you have it. Now, so we've built, we've put the bottom end back together, or if you've had to send it off, you've got it back and it's ready to go. Now, you don't want to um, get overwhelmed with parts and lots to do at one time. So I do this a little at a time. So I only have, a little job to do at one time. So I'm gonna try to break my way around without killing myself here. And show you this side. So, you know, I've rebuilt the clutch, um, uh, new clutch plates, new, new springs, such as that. I told you about the uh, bolt kit. I've cleaned everything. You wanna make sure you get a new spark plug, of course and um, just move around along. So I personally put my bottom end in the bike and then I put the top end on. You don't have to do that, maybe that's the wrong way. Um, but that's how I do it. And I think other people do it that way too, or some of them do, um, but that's what I do. If you have an engine stand, then you can work on it that way. But at this point, I could go ahead and get the engine in and um, hopefully, if you planned correctly, your top end is back from wherever you sent it. So that's why it's important to plan and uh, and to get uh, so that you're not you know overwhelmed, but also not waiting a long time. Okay, so trying to wrap this up a little bit. Um, so now we've made it to uh, getting the motor back together. 
Um, we tried to plan best we could. If you're working on your bottom end, you worked on the bottom end while you would sent the top end off to get, uh, get perfect again. Um, if you planned it right, hopefully the top end come in uh, after, after you get the bottom end done. So if you didn't do the bottom and you were fine with it, uh, you took time to clean it, uh, make it look good, uh, fix any, any little imperfections, maybe replace a bolt here, there, whatever you needed to do while you're waiting on the top end. Um, and then if you send it off, hopefully, you know, you get the whole thing back. And so once your motor is, however you did it, once your motor is back assembled again, you've got all the parts back together, it's all good, it's working, you got new bearings, you got a new top, you can breathe a uh, sigh of relief. I know that I always do because uh, getting that taken care of is just, I'm, I'm usually tense during that time. So it's done. Oh. The rest is, is uh, just uh, hard parts, and those are a lot easier to work on. So, um, motor is back in the frame. Um, we've got now the swing arm back on. Uh, if you've had to replace uh, bearings, uh, you've done that. And if you didn't, and you didn't, but whatever you needed to do to the swing arm, you've done it. And it's back on. You've got a frame, you've got a swing arm, you've got a motor, you've got front and rear suspension. Um, you're moving right along. Now, uh, you want your restoration to look nice. You want it to, uh, you know, turn out great. You want it to uh, uh, be, be a great build once you're done, something you're proud of. And if you're, you know, what, whatever your plans are with the bike, um, you know, you still want it to, to be nice. So, at this point, um, it's time to get the, um, you, you've got your motor in the frame, you wanna get your uh, subframe carburetor back on, make sure it's clean, it's set up good. I would recommend uh, replacing your throttle cable uh, if you have it, or if it's uh, even possibly in need of it, or if it's pretty old, I would go ahead and do it now. I always replace the clutch cable and the throttle cable, always, always. And one other tip is that I try to get OEM cables for both. They are the exact size they need to be. I know they fit. They may be a little more expensive, but they are a much, much better. I mean, I don't want to say they're much better, but they are a good quality product. And there are plenty of aftermarket companies that sell great cables. So if you've had good luck with those, you should continue to use them. Um, I've just had good luck with the OEM ones. So now's a great time while you put the carburetor on to replace that cable. Um, and then, um, and same way with the clutch cable. So you want to do that. Um, get the uh, get the rear back on. Um, if you are doing anything to your wheels, uh, you will you know hopefully you've done that already. If not, now's a great time to do it. One thing that you do want to um, keep in mind is you're not in a race. You don't have to have this thing finished by a particular time. Most people don't have to have it finished by a particular time. So take your time. Don't give yourself too much to do at one time, and don't over order parts. So what I mean by that is order enough parts maybe to get your free shipping, but don't just just pile them in and you'll, you'll forget what's what, it's too much to do, it's overwhelming. Make sure you give yourself little jobs at a time. So um, so maybe just, you know, we've worked on the motor, it's in, that's it. Uh, we've got the, uh, uh, the swing arm uh, bearings put in yesterday. Great. That's all I want to do today. You want to do a little bit at a time. That way it's not overwhelming and you're, you're able to easily keep up with what's going on. So we're at the point where we're putting wheels on it. Um, if you've had to replace bearings, hopefully you've done that. Um, if your tires are worn, now's the time to replace them. They're both off. Go ahead and do it. Uh, I like to replace the tire, the tube, the uh, strap, and, uh, and the uh, locks, uh, the, uh, the bead locks. So I like to go ahead and do all that while I've got it apart. So uh, I don't want to use old tires and I don't want to use old tubes. I don't want to have to take the thing back apart. So I want to go ahead and take care of that. So those go back on. Um, brakes, check your brake pads. Um, clean your brakes very, very well. I like to take my brake calipers off and I have a, um, a sandblasting cabinet that I use with uh, glass bead uh, media. And I like to use that for brake calipers. It makes them look nice and uh, fresh again, cleans all the crud off of them. Um, and then um, 
I personally replace my uh, brake pads uh, and brake lines with Galfer brake lines and brake pads. Uh, they are the top quality and they, they always have um, the brake lines to fit your bike. It seems like no matter what brand I have or how old it is, they've got one to fit it. So I really love using them. I recommend that. So um, brakes, wheels, at this point you're, you're on the home stretch. Um, and so uh, one thing that I, I would, would recommend is uh, take time to make your bike look good. Don't, don't just make it plain or make it look like any other bike. I would not go ahead and go on eBay and order just a standard graphics kit if you're, you're going to do that. Um, I don't want to show up and look like every other bike at the track. So I'd recommend using a decal company, getting something maybe a little more um, custom for you and uh, make it look more like what, what you want to look like rather than you look like everybody else. So it's a great time to go ahead and order that. Uh, new plastics if you're going to do that or clean up the ones you've got. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's not hard to order a front and rear fender and redo that, maybe even radiator shrouds. Unless your bike is older, it can be a little bit more difficult. So uh, anyway, that's where we're at now. Uh, kind of again on the home stretch. So let's move over to maybe the Suzuki or Honda behind me for the finish. All right, so we've pretty much got everything back together at this point. I chose to come over here to the Suzuki because it's my favorite. And um, I like to do graphics and decals absolutely last. Just, just love it. Um, in this case, I replaced the seat foam in this one and a new seat cover. And I would suggest doing the same thing to yours if needed. Um, if the seat foam is at all wore out or it's a standard one, it's been on there a while, maybe a great time to get a different density or just, just replacing it all together. Um, but at this point, um, we're all, all back together. Um, I have taken the time to do this a little at a time. So I've done, like we, we went through the frame and then the cleaning and then the suspension and then uh, maybe the wheels and then uh, one thing or the other, or the, the, the bearings, you name it. Um, in this case, uh, these old bikes uh, like this one and the CR have the fork gators. So, you know, I wanted to get those on. So at any rate, this is the time where everything is back together and um, fluids can go in it and hopefully hopefully we're running okay so um there you have it. that's a great looking bike huh love that one that yamaha is great too i need to do a little bit of work on the yamaha um coming up very soon so uh let's uh, wrap it up here i'll give you a few other little tips that i do and uh hopefully that'll be a help to you Okay, so back where we started here, um, hopefully I've given you some guides or maybe some tips or processes that at least I use that'll help you with your build. Um, it is easy to get discouraged. It is easy to just quit in the middle of it, but that's why I say do, uh, do several things. Make sure you stay organized. Only give yourself little jobs at a time. Don't try to restore the thing in a day. Don't try to do it all in a weekend, um, unless you just really want to do that. I'm definitely not going to do that. Um, and, and do a little at a time, but make sure you, you stay consistent and do a little bit at a time. To, again, plan and, and organize. Make sure that you, you're, if you're sending parts off, you're sending things off while you can do other things, okay? So that's what you want to do. Um, one other tip that I personally do, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, um, is before I put that bottom end in that bike, when I've got it on the bench, I go ahead and put oil in it. I, I don't know if that's, again, right or wrong. The reason is, is because if there is a leak, I can fix it now, rather than put it in the bike, and then have to pull it back out of the bike and fix it. Um, how do I know this? Don't ask me because it's happened before. So basically after uh, a KX that I was working on one time kept, kept leaking and I had to, to fix it and pull it out. So I quit doing that. So that's one other tip I would give you. So uh, again, just work a little at a time. 
Um, you don't have to spend a million dollars to do it. If you can do a lot of the work yourself, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. Send it to somebody who can. That way you know it's done right. Um, don't go cramming screwdrivers in places they don't need to be and hammering on things that you don't need to be hammering on because you can't get a bearing out or you can't get a screw out or this one's broke or whatever. Uh, utilize a machine shop. Utilize, um, don't kill yourself in your shop. Utilize uh, um, uh, engine builders. Utilize professionals and shop companies and things. And do a little at a time, but make sure you stay, like I said, stay consistent. Keep moving with it. And uh, you'll end up with a great looking bike. So um, thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, of, of any help to you at all. If you have any comments or suggestions, I am wide open. I love suggestions. I get them all the time from, uh, from social media and even on YouTube. So I love it. So by all means, if you see something that would be of help to me, let me know. But hopefully that's, uh, this has uh, been some help to you. So guys... Good luck with your builds. I hope you uh, hope you uh, have a, a, a great a, a great time doing it. Um, and uh, and let me see what you've got. Uh, look me up on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see your builds and what you got going on. Um, or if you need any help at all, maybe I've got a part, or maybe um, I've got an idea I can share with you. By all means, let's let's connect there and uh, and keep me up to date. So thanks again, guys, girls. Uh, for watching and if you um, do like the video and some of the other videos by all means uh, click the subscribe button we'd love to stay connected on YouTube that way thanks again for watching